Gallimore number 28 came to the Bears as a late round draft choice from tiny Florida A&M and proved to be one of the last great steals before scouting became sophisticated. Elusive and swift, Willie was the Ferrari of running backs, possessing a passing gear other players only dream about. A rival defensive lineman once said, he was not hard to bring down once you got your hands on him, but getting your hands on Willie was unbelievably difficult. Willie was nicknamed Willie the Wisp. And in reality, that was the way he ran. All of a sudden, you'd see him break out into the open, and uh, you don't know where he came from. Willie was unbelievably quick going downfield. He, he wasn't uh, sideways or this way. He just zoomed down the field and seemed to be so fast, nobody could catch him. First game, NFL, he was the best player on the field. And you could see it. All right, we got ourselves a, a Hall of Fame Pro Bowl player here. That's his fourth takeaway in two and a quarter games for the Redskins. Everybody could see it. Even though our list of top flight athletes, it was something different about him, and it separated him from the rest of us. We were playing against Cincinnati. We talked about this play all week. And we were like, you know, Sean, you're going to go out there under Chad Johnson, make him throw it high, and I was going to get to, like, come over the top and, like, be the hero. And he jumps up and picks it off. You drew it up to be a good play. And he made it a great play. He made it a turnover. He made it something mere mortals. Ball with friends at this public park in Monroe, Louisiana, when he heard the anguished cries of three young boys who had waded into a shallow but muddy nearby pond. Although he could not swim, Joe Delaney reacted in a fashion consistent with his nature. There's a deep section there that they didn't know about, and it was about six foot deep, and the three of them went under at this time. And uh, two of them didn't come up, but the third one did come up. He ran to the bank and yelled for help. As he yelled for help, there was a large crowd of people in the park that day, and Joe Delaney was one of them. And as he heard uh, the young child yell for help, well, he came running, and when he found out there were two boys who had just gone under the water here, well, he jumped in the water in an attempt to save him, and uh, he didn't come up either. Although it was a real shock uh, when I found out exactly how it happened, it wasn't surprising. I mean, he, he really, really cared about people. He was a, a team player. He cared about his teammates, uh, and I, I could just see him. Those, those children were in need, and, and he went to help them. Uh, maybe it's easier to accept it because of the way he died, but... Uh... He clearly deserved it. He was very unique and very inspirational. But I don't think just to African Americans, I think to uh, many athletes who followed in his tracks because ultimately it was the game that counted and the commonality was not the color. So he represented great things to all people. Never thought he was going to die. He didn't live like a man dying. He showed me how to live like a man living. And that's the way he was. You look at someone who has done all he could to make life better for somebody else, and now his life is ebbing out, and there's nothing you can do about it. It was. When you're on the line during the national anthem, that's about eight. National anthem is about a ten, actually. I get fired up for that. You know, I have a patriotic bone to me, so I, I really, emotionally, I actually let myself go for that. In 2000, Tillman experienced a breakout season that earned him a spot on Sports Illustrated's All Pro Team. Ed Tillman, a man they say was born to hit, comes up with the ball. Pat Tillman in 2000 is the third year, seventh round draft choice, starts and breaks our record for tackles, 224. That still stands today. 